Welcome to Engage Lab. I'm your host, Ajay Puri. In this episode, we'll learn how to run an unconference. To learn more about what an unconference is or the tips on making it engaging, check out our other how to videos. The structure there are five main components of an unconference the opening, creating the agenda and sign up, open space time, report back and action planning, and the closing. Sidebar, it's true an unconference has no predetermined agenda, but it does have an overall structure. This framework doesn't tell attendees how they should learn or what they should do, but rather it encourages a richer environment where participants can come up with their own ideas and solutions. Part one, the opening. This is where you set the stage and get the attendees excited about the day ahead. It's where you seed the burning question, inform people why you brought them together, and then share the four principles in one law. You can also have a quick icebreaker to get people open and engaged. We recommend trying this with smaller groups or having attendees chat one-on-one -on -one with each other. This way people can open up, feel connected, and get ready to share the ideas for session topics. Part two, creating the agenda and signing up. This is the time for you to call on the group to figure out what they want to do. Show them the blank wall where the session topics will go. Indicate that you will need their help in filling it up. Now, some will feel nervous or intimidated by the blank wall, but reassure them that after this process, the magic is that it will be a fully developed gathering that they themselves have created. To help attendees come up with session ideas, pro them on why they've come today. What would they like to get out of the session? What challenges are they facing? What ideas do they have? This is a time to share and have others help you out. Have some time for attendees to reflect and write out their ideas. Once attendees are ready, ask them to come to the front and line up. One by one, have them share the ideas in front of the group. Once all the speakers have shared all their session ideas, have them put it on a specific time on the blank wall. When all the session times are filled up, have the attendees come up to the board and see what sessions appeal to them. Here's a tip. Give speakers a set time to share their idea, probably like a minute or so. Even though you want people to get enticed by the session topics, you don't want the process to last too long. Part three, open space time. Time to stretch out and get people to work hard. Okay. So this is the time attendees go through the sessions they'd like to attend. While the sessions are going, you should stay in the main area, but feel free to wander around and see what's happening. Part four, the report back and the action planning. Once the open space time is over, ask everyone to come to the main area. Try not to make this too informal, but simply ask session leaders to share the highlights of the session and what they accomplished. Here's a power tip. You can have participants fill out a standard report back form. This is what was discussed, what are the outcomes, who was involved, and how will the project be achieved. This can be a powerful way for people to summarize their sometimes messy but productive conversations. Have them share their one pager or reflections on the wall. This way people can see them and participate in the next section, which is voting and determining how best to proceed. And they get to see what happened live, not just months after in a summary report. Part five, the finale or the closing. You made it this far, nice work. The aim of the closing is to try to capture the energy and momentum that happened during the day. Inform people on what will happen next. Keep it simple, reflective and forward thinking. In the finale, there's no need to have formal presentations or speeches, but it's a good idea to announce commitments, next steps, and observations of what happened. You can even ask participants to share their reflections on the process, what they learned, and what their commitments are moving forward. So that's it. Following these five parts, you'll be well on your way on hosting your own unconference. Go for it. Let us know how it goes for you. We'd love to hear what worked and what didn't work. If you have any questions, keep in touch. We'd love to help you plan your own unconference. If you have any other topics for Engage Lab, let us know, and we'll post it on our next video. And remember, you can click down below for the user guide to learn how to run your own unconference. Thanks again for watching. We loved you. Uh, is that it? Well, yeah. I mean, the other thing you could do is celebrate. Might as well. People work really hard. Have a drink, have a big party, whatever you like. Is there anything special in the plan for the first? No, just have some food, some drinks. People will be happy. How much time should we dedicate for an unconference? Well, it's up to you. You've been doing conferences probably before. You probably want to take the day. The minimum time that we say is about five hours. Otherwise, it won't really work because you'll be rushing through everything. What if I still feel nervous? A little bit of nervousness is okay. What we learned is that the more you practice it for your first one, you'll see it becomes more natural. Then you won't even need your notes anymore and you'll be very comfortable with the unknown. And the most important tip is to have fun. <laughs>